Good morning and welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. I'm your host, Deborah Chantry-Taylor, and today I am joined by one of our previous guests. So I've got Lawrence McLean back again. Plan for the future and, and not kind of, you know, I'm, I'm a wing it person um, yeah. personally, but, yeah, <laughs> but running a business, I, I, I plan in advance and yes. I make sure that I, I can see the potential challenges, yep. um, I can see the potential benefits, and mm-hmm. therefore I'm prepared for, for both of those and, and, and can get the, make the most of it, essentially. Um, you know, you want to make sure that as, as those changes are coming, um, they're not catching you off guard, you're not having to be reactive or scrambling to have a reaction, you've mm-hmm. actually got that idea planned out, you've got that, you know, that potential planned out. And, and look, you may do 10 hours of planning, for yeah. only one little change, but better to be overplanned or overprepared, I think, and 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 not need it than to be underprepared and, and need a lot of pain that you haven't done. So planning is definitely the right thing. Lance is the Associate Director of Employee Shore, and we had such a great chat last time round about employment issues and people that we invite him back on the show again. So welcome back. Great, thank you. Great to be here. Yeah, it's really good to have you here. So the reason we got you back on was because this year, being 2024, um, we've got a new government in place, right? Yes. And obviously a new government, nothing's going to change overnight, but this government's made it quite clear they plan to make some changes quite quickly. That's right. Um, and in fact, some of them were already implemented last year, I believe. So let, let's have a bit of a chat about, you know, um, first of all, let's start with your background and let's hear about you and where you've come from, where you're at, and then we'll have a talk about where the government's going. Yeah, so I, I was... Uh come from Bay Plenty, Waikato region. So dealing with a lot of small and medium-sized businesses there in, in my hometowns and um, really coming from a more of a legal background. I practiced for a couple of years and then have for the last, must be seven years now. So a bit of time I've been working with Employee Shore, focusing on helping small and medium-sized businesses across New Zealand with the various employment relations and health and safety challenges that they come across. So it's a really exciting space. As, as, as you say, there's lots going on and yeah. lots that has been going on. We're really excited to see what, what this year is going to bring. And you've got uh, 7,500 companies or so, isn't it, in New Zealand? We do. So 7,500 yeah. companies in New Zealand, another 23,000 in Australia, wow. about it must be 30,000 plus across our global our global partners as well. Oh, that's fantastic. Okay. So the new government came in last year, came in kind of almost, almost well, came in with a bit of a fizzle and then all guns blazing yes, is, yes. is my perception of yeah. it, as in that uh, it took a long while to actually get some certainty, but now we've got it and they're pretty clear about what they plan to do. What do you think are the, the biggest um, changes we're likely to see? Um, I, I think the new government, the National-led coalition, has really been focusing on or, or they, they campaigned on being more business-friendly. So I guess maybe tipping the scales back towards businesses, um, mm-hmm. if you want to describe it that way. Um, the previous Labour government focused a lot on empowering employees, giving rights to employees. And, you know, there's an argument for that. It obviously comes with challenges and costs for particularly small and medium-sized businesses. So I think this is really about um, tipping the scales back, I guess, the, um, in, in the other direction. And that's very common between governments. It's often yeah. a pendulum swing back and forth. So the pendulum was the example yes. I was going to use. I think it always goes backwards and forwards. It does. Um, but we have to be, I mean, and we're not political on this show at all, mm. but I suppose we have to be aware of the fact that New Zealand is made up of, what, 350,000 yes. small and medium-sized that's businesses. Right. And it's almost like the backbone of the country. It, it is. Yeah. And so in some respects, you know, being able to do a little bit more for them, I think is a good thing. Okay. So um, what can we look forward to in terms of key improvements? Uh, so I think if we, if we look mainly at some of the key drivers or some of the key issues that this government um, has campaigned on, one of the ones that they've already put into effect is the repealing of the a fair pay legislation. Mm. So what that's meant is essentially that um, a lot of uh, industry type jobs, so if you look, for example, at hospitality or retail, there was going to be a bargaining process where they would have a whole lot of similar terms, pay, conditions, working hours, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And, and um, they were in the process of bargaining for that last year under the previous Labour government. This new national-led coalition has scrapped those agreements completely and essentially put it back to the, the old ways of negotiating, which is essentially either through a union, yep. which is mainly for bigger organisations, probably not not really for small and medium-sized entities, um, or just that individual one-on-one type employer and employee type negotiation. So, so that's the change that's already come into effect. That, yep. That's probably going to be, it's not so much a change because it never really came into effect in the first place, but it's, <laughs> yep. it's the... It's the elimination of a change that was going to occur, I guess, this year. Sure. And so that's only going to apply for new contracts, though, going forward? Or do we have to look retrospectively as well? I mean, you're right. It does only apply to new contracts, although it's always a good business practice, I think, to review your existing um, agreements. Mm -hmm. Laws change all the time. You know, the way that your business might operate changes. The way you might want to interact with your employee changes. So, so yes, you know, you'd only 
do a full negotiation when you hire a new employee. But it's always good practice, I think, to review your agreements and say, is there some improvements we can make, both from the employee's point of view and also from your business point of view? Okay. So how often would you recommend people do that? Um, yearly, at okay. least. Yep. Um, so so I think it's always helpful. And look, it may be that you do a yearly review and you decide not to change anything, but at least you know you've had that look yep. and you've made that conscious decision. Mm -hmm. um, but, but there are often changes that occur. You know, normally there's pay rates or pay reviews that might happen or performance reviews that might happen. They may result in changes to an employment agreement. Yep. Your hours of work might change. Um, your location of work might change. There's lots of things that can change. So it's usually yearly, yearly, but as and when required um, as well. It's interesting. I was actually chatting with a couple of the um, associate directors at, at Baker Tilly, Staples Robway the other day, and they were saying that, you know, they've now moved to very much a hybrid working yes. model, which is quite a big change from the old days. And that's so right. I suppose that's one of those things that's happened due to COVID, but is now really embedding itself as a more permanent a exactly. thing. So that means actually looking at your employment contracts is not a bad idea. And we have lots of employee sure clients that are still asking us questions about you know changing the, the 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 type of employment to have that more hybrid work or sometimes fully remote mm -hmm. or sometimes to bring hybrid or fully remote workers back to the office so yep. going through those sorts of processes i think uh, 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 it's, it's still an ongoing issue for businesses mm -hmm. um, even though covid's over you can put that in quotation marks it's, yeah. it's, it's still around but <laughs> but i guess the, yep. the excitement of it has kind of gone away but it, it's still a pressing issue i think for a lot of businesses out there mm, that, that makes perfect sense actually it is interesting covid hasn't really gone away has mm. it when we're talking about the potential it's going to be quite a large spike around Christmas. That's right. Back together and, yes. and also, I suppose it's not going to be the last time we have some kind of outbreak either, is it? And uh, exactly. It may not be COVID, but whatever the next the next variation yep. is, is on its way. So um, is that something that should be built into employment contracts? Because uh, I had never really thought about yeah. that as a an issue. I mean, absolutely. Whether it's employment contracts or employment um, handbooks or your policies, oh, yeah. um, it's, it's a definitely a health and safety consideration that mm -hmm. businesses should be taking into effect. I mean, before COVID, it was flu season. Yes. Um, and it, you know, it wasn't kind of a zeitgeisty type topic that businesses <laughs> talked about, but it did have a big impact on businesses. I think COVID kind of really brought it to the forefront for businesses to, to have front of mind. Mm -hmm. um, and I think moving forward now, businesses are a lot more conscious about the effects that those sorts of seasonal um, outbreaks can have on a business yep. um, and, and particularly effects on, on your working staff, your capacity to, uh, you know, do the, do what you're in business for essentially. Mm. So having good policies around, you know, do you support flu vaccinations? Do you, do you buy those for your employees yep. or, you know, do you have changed the way that sick leave works or, you know, do you have, if there is a large outbreak, do you maybe change the way that you work, for example, have more hybrid working? Mm -hmm. Those are sorts of, I think, things that businesses can think about that can actually make a big difference. Yeah. It's interesting because, you know, obviously I'm in the US implementer and we actually, we have a thing called the accountability chart yep. and the accountability chart is very much, it's not about titles and about hierarchy, but it's actually the main function of the business, who's accountable for it, what are their main responsibilities within that? And it eventually does replace a traditional organizational yep. chart. But we always make the kind of call that actually you should review that on a regular basis too, because nothing should be set in stone. Every 12 months, exactly. you might be in a slightly different situation. It's a great chance to have a look at it and go, hey, has anything changed? Do we need to change the structure to support that? And I think that's the other thing that COVID has taught a lot of businesses is you've got to be adaptable. You've yeah. got to be able to respond to changes that happen. Sometimes they're driven by central government. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they're driven by business needs or consumer demand. But yeah. you've always got to have that ability to adapt to the situation in front of you and deal with it in, in a way that's going to benefit your business mm, fair the enough. best. Okay, so back to the um, the government things. Is there any kind of reprieve or grants or like new things that could help small businesses, particularly in that sort of growth scaling up mentality? Yeah, I mean, there's a few other changes that the government has proposed to, to make. One is going to be the reintroduction of um, 90 day trial periods for more businesses. So currently yeah. they exist for those employers. Under that 20, have, was it? Yeah, 19 yep. or fewer employees, exactly. That's right. yep. um, going to be changed. So now that it affects, uh, or it's an option open for all businesses. So that's in the government's 100 day plan. So we'd like to see that in February or March this year, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it, it's not something that all businesses would use. And the idea is that hopefully you don't need to use that in the first place, but it is a tool, you know, at employer sure we do help a lot of clients as they use that particular tool to make sure they've got the right people that have the right fit for their organization. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be an additional tool that businesses can use. Yep. I think the other big change coming down the line is, is, is going to be a change to the migration settings. Uh -huh. We know that in 2023, one of the biggest issues that, that employer sure's clients had was really around hiring labor you know having the right people at the right time for the right role that had the right fit mm -hmm. and i think the increase to, to migration which is most likely going to be the outcome we don't know the exact details yet about what the government's going to change but they've indicated that it's something they want to look at right. and it's likely to see an increase in migration i mean we already had i think it was 142 percent increase in migration year on year mm -hmm. in, in the previous year yep. i think you'd like to see that continue to increase and therefore 
you know, the market will probably be a bit more employer friendly in the sense that there's going to be more employees open to work and hopefully not as hard a time trying to fill those those roles that businesses need. There's certainly been a lot of feedback from my clients is trying to find people yeah. um, to fill those roles has been it made it really tough. I know it's been good for an employee employee ease perspective because it pushed rates up and it made That's things right. a bit more you know, yes. for them but then we've got to think that there's a lot of small businesses that are reliant on people to actually op- keep their doors open That's right. and if they can't get those people we saw it throughout COVID like the hospitality industry had a massive issue around being able to keep doors open because they couldn't exactly. get people to work in there and hospitality retail tourism you know particularly Food having picking. just gone through the Christmas period exactly <laughs> oh, yeah. um, has you know that that's a, um, a, a, a industry that's on the government's in demand list so mm-hmm. so we know that those are jobs that businesses are trying to fill Um, and we also know as as you pointed out that you know a a high demand for employees increases labor costs you know if if you look at for example last year the inflation rate increased by six percent but wages increased by between 6.6 and 7.1 percent so outstripping inflation essentially and you know obviously that's great for employees if you're you're a business that's a positive uh your employee that's a positive thing but if you're a business and you've got tight margins particularly small and medium-sized enterprises that, that can have a big effect on your business. So yeah. we like to see probably an easing of that of that wage growth uh, this and, year as well. And it's well. not to say that we, you know, we all believe in a fair pay for a fair job, and that's why I think my most yeah. good people operate is, you know, we want to pay people well, um, but we have to be cognizant of the fact that the, the impact that has on small businesses. That's right. Bigger businesses can wear it a whole lot easier. Exactly. Smaller businesses are going to really impact yeah. them. Yeah. And again, it's that pendulum swing. You know, employees will have a, a really favourable year in terms of wages, and they might have a slow year the next year, but it will swing back. Yeah. And I think it kind of evens out that, you know, that's that's the economic theory at least anyway that it will even out at the end of the day we shall see how things kind of pan out okay so what are the what do you think are the current challenges for SMEs at the moment in New Zealand and and particularly going forward further into 2024 yeah I mean we've talked about hiring labor we've talked about labor costs I think those are challenges that will continue this year yep I think the global economic uncertainty that that's still an issue I mean that's been an issue since COVID started to be honest but it's things like you know supply costs um, inflation is a global issue it's not just a New Zealand issue it's Mm -hmm. a it's, it's across the globe, um, you know, adapting to climate change. Yep. You know, that's going to be a massive um, issue for a lot of businesses. And, and you may think it only applies to the bigger businesses and to a large extent it is going to affect them more directly. But smaller businesses see all the flow on effects for that. For yep. example, transportation costs go up. Yes. It can have a large impact on, on the business or where you source your your goods from or your materials mm-hmm. from or how you deliver your your products to your, to your customers. Mm. So I think that global uncertainty is probably going to at least for the first half of this year yeah i think the um, reserve bank has indicated that um, if, uh, interest rates are going to remain high till at least 2025 potentially yeah. so yeah. <laughs> we like to see those sorts of challenges continue throughout this year as well which is a pinch on everything that, yeah. that, that's right yeah. um i mean there's lots of other challenges coming down uh, um, the line as well i think adapt, adoption to ai that that's still an ongoing issue for a lot of businesses it's not just climate change it's ai as yeah. well yeah um employers did a global survey last year on 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 our businesses and and how they're adapting to ai and what we found is for new zealand um only about 35 percent of clients were using um, AI, AI, 65% yep. not using it at all. Mm-hmm. Um, and it can have a lot of positive, I mean, it, it comes with challenges, don't get me wrong. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and, and you've got to you've got to use it in the right way to get the real benefit out of it. But it can come with a lot of um, positives in terms of those more automated, automatable tasks. Yeah, admin, the boring kind of research exactly, stuff, all that, yeah. A, a, exactly, creative writing. People use that a lot, yes. for AI a lot for that and have seen some good results there. So. But it's more, this is what it really kind of frustrates me. It's more than just um, the, people think about chat GPT being yes. AI, but it's not that. So, you That's know, right. I work with a, a client that is a family business. They have a market garden. Yep. The AI they're looking at is how do we actually harvest our um, fruit and, and vegetables easier? How do we actually ensure we remain weed free using AI that yes. can actually go through and automatically weed right. the rows and exactly. stuff like that? So it is it is more than just chat GPT. Yep. And I think that you think about it, if we can stop having people going out there like, pulling up onions and, and have it done by a machine, That's right. um, that person can be freed up to do things that potentially have more value or just more interesting. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you think about big businesses and how they use AI. They use it for example for quality control yep. and they can automate a lot of tasks very quickly and have a very high quality control i think a lot of small businesses are probably a bit more reluctant to use it and that's completely understandable i can see why yep. but you can see that if a big businesses can benefit from it 
and, and if they're going to put all the money in investing it and yeah. you know kind of perfecting it then hopefully those smaller businesses can, can get the, some of the flow on effects from that as well yeah i was talking to somebody the other day about that now obviously there's a i can't remember what the actual law is but uh, um is it moore's law i think the more that yes. it's available then it becomes you know, more re realistic for small businesses That's to right. use it as well exactly. and then it just kind of self-perpetuates which is great yeah. so there's plenty of really exciting things coming out and exactly. i think we should embrace ai of course be wary of yes. what potentially can happen but um there's some really great things we can do even in small businesses exactly. it's not going to be replacement it's, it's no. always going to be a need for for humans in the equation as i think as they call it but ai can supplement your business you yeah. know to, to to make it more effective or more efficient mm -hmm. which just make your life easier to be yeah. honest as a business owner and as you said i mean things like picking up imperfections and things it's actually much better than the, the human will ever be yeah, exactly. because there isn't the human element in there so, <laughs> exactly yeah. exactly yeah. <laughs> okay cool so we've got um skill shortage labor costs we've got global economic uncertainty this is really fascinating because i keep forgetting because most of my businesses this year have had a oh, last year have had a fantastic year yeah um and and it's like I keep forgetting there's actually a global economic crisis. But I was speaking to somebody who'd been over in the UK, <laughs> and apparently it's pretty shit over there. And it's mm. like we, I think we're very, we're almost a little bit sheltered here from what is going on yeah, over there. We are. I mean, it's you know, different countries experience it in different ways. Like the US is having a bit of a boom. Yep. The UK is having a bit of a going with a bit of a tough time. So yes. you know, again, it's back to that pendulum swing it goes yep. back and forward basically. But but you know, I think you know, even if you're a local business, you might only have a, a local client base. Mm -hmm. A lot of the impacts of you know, a lot of things that can impact your business are actually built on the global supply chain or yeah. the effects that are happening in other countries. So it's all interconnected. You know, mm -hmm. we, we live in a multicultural, multinational um, economy at the moment. So, or, or we have for a long time. So it, it's, you know, if you're cognizant of that, you can kind of see potentially some of the effects that come from the line. Mm -hmm. You're prepared for that. You can actually be more insulated against those effects when, when they do, hit, if and when they do hit you. Yeah. We, I always talk about the emergency plan, and I say it's like it, it's really good to have a plan A, a plan B, and potentially even a plan C um, right. that you you write in the good times, so that you're actually writing it with a clear mind, looking at all yes. the possibilities, looking at what can be done. So when the tough times hit, when you're in that almost fight or flight mode, exactly. you're not making decisions based in fight or flight mode. You're actually going back to the plan and going, oh yeah, that's what we decided. Now that's we right. can execute on that in a nice, calm, um, considered manner, as opposed to ah, the sky's falling in. <laughs> exactly, and we see that <laughs> in Porsche all the time. We've got clients that go through tough times they might yep. have to go through a structure process they potentially lose some of their really high quality employees mm -hmm. and then they get through that you know through a lot of hard work and a lot of dedication yep. and they're in the good times but now they don't have that staff that, that added a lot to their business so not to say that it's not always the right you know sometimes it is the right decision to Absolutely. make but Unless you, you don't want to panic you don't want to be yep. too reactive if you plan for those bad times and you have a plan through it they're actually survivable and you, and you can work through it yeah. and you can come out the other end still in a very strong position you don't want to lose all your gains you yeah. know that you've, you've worked really hard for just because we have a, a you know a bad year for example or mm -hmm. a bad couple of months yeah okay that's cool um so what can we look forward to this year do you think so, so particularly the small and medium-sized kiwi businesses what's the what's the excitement i mean I'm, I'm actually very excited about this year <laughs> i think that there's some, some huge opportunities yeah. I, I even i always argue that even when we go through the tough times it actually opens up more opportunities for us so what do you think we can look forward to exactly i mean i think we, we're going to see a lot of um a lot of a lot more um, interconnectedness across across various countries so the government um, has talked a lot about creating more jobs and using migration to do that mm -hmm. i think we're going to see a lot more of a diverse sort of skill set coming into new zealand which is going to open a lot of opportunities i think for a lot of businesses you know i, I think as you know you think for example the space industry in new zealand it's not yeah. something you would typically associate with new zealand yes. but we actually actually have quite a thriving industry in that regard True. can have lots of offshoots for a lot of other businesses that can benefit from that but it actually attracts a certain skill set that we never had in New Zealand before mm. and it actually diversifies our work base diversifies the the types of roles and demand in New Zealand mm. and I think can open up a lot of really new and exciting opportunities for businesses you know if, you, if you've been selling this, the same thing for 20 years you might have had a really successful business but that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you're going to be successful for the next 20 years and so I think being open to that sort of diversity to that adaption as I talked about earlier you know embracing those changes embracing the the diversity and, and some of the skill set that we're going to see I think can result in some really you know maybe left field changes but yep. but really exciting changes nonetheless I think for a lot of businesses so what do you recommend people do because you know if you're running a small medium-sized business you're often in the weeds you're often in that right. fighting fires you're just you know I always say it's the 80 20 you're spending 80 percent of your time trying to keep the business doors open and for some people that's 100 percent of the time yeah. um we really should spend 20 percent of our time thinking about what's changing how would we improve right. things where I move forward but if they're stuck in those weeds and they're thinking I don't know what to do what would you recommend they do to get themselves up out of that lift themselves up and and look for the possibilities I mean you talked about already have a plan 
time. Yep. I think that's that's the that's the number one key thing you can do is, is plan for the future and and not kind of you know I'm I'm a wing it person um, yeah. personally, but yeah, <laughs> but running a business I I, I plan in advance yes. and I make sure that I I can see the potential challenges. Yep. Um, I can see the potential benefits and mm. therefore I'm prepared for for both of those and, and, and can get the make the most of it essentially. Um, you know you want to make sure that as, as those changes are coming. Um, they're not catching you off guard. You're not having to be reactive or scrambling to have a reaction. You've mm -hmm. actually got that idea planned out. You've got that, you know, that potential planned out. And, and look, you may do 10 hours of planning for yeah. only one little change, but better to be over planned or over prepared, I think, and, and, and not need it than to be under prepared and, and need a lot of planning that you haven't done. So planning is definitely the right thing. And then I think the other big thing is, is getting support. You know, if, if you're a business, small business in the weeds, um, you know, you're probably not, you didn't get into business to, to deal with regulations or to deal with legal elements and, you know, deal with those sorts of challenges. But you got in business because you're passionate about what it is that you want to do. And that's something that we connect with a lot of our clients at EmployShore. Yep. They're passionate about driving trucks, baking cakes, building buildings, whatever it is. They're not passionate about the employment relations and health and safety. <laughs> I am because I'm a nerd in that area, but, <laughs> but they're not. And so we use this to help them. And, and you can apply that to all different aspects of businesses. Yeah. Um, so I think making sure you've got this support you're not you're not doing it alone you, yep. you're not you're not trying to struggle through it because it, it's not only is it often not helpful doesn't doesn't really work but it actually has a personal toll on on business owners as well and we know that a lot of small and medium-sized business owners are you know again mum and dad business yep. owners for lack of a better term um, and it can be really taxing, I think, to try to deal with all of that on your own. Yeah, I agree. I always talk about the three-legged stool for any kind of business owner or entrepreneur. And it's, you know, I think you need to have a, a, a business coach or a mentor or a experts right. that can help you in the yes. areas that you don't know the things. Exactly. And you need an operating system. That's, of course, my specialty in terms of, you know, having that framework, having the plan, saying what to do. Yeah. And then you need peer groups as well. And I think the peer yeah. groups are really important because they actually give you a bit of a sense of, okay, I'm not going through this alone. I can share things with people in a similar situation who can actually, um, you know, share their experiences and help me because they've been there, done that. Yep. Um, so I, I really highly recommend things like, you know, the Family Business Association for family businesses, Entrepreneurs Organization, YPO for for those kind of you know, non-familial businesses. Yeah. Any kind of peer group you can get yourself <laughs> into, I think is a great idea. It, it's really easy to start a business. It's really hard to get it right. <laughs> yes. um, and, and I think New Zealand has the easiest um, in the in the Western economy, at least anyway, it's the easiest to start a business here in New Zealand. Than Do you think it still else. is? I, I think it still is. Yep. Um, from a regulatory point of view, at least it is. Sure. Um, An ongoing. Start, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Starting, Starting a business is easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, making it making it survive and and scaling that growth up. That's yep. the hard bit. Yeah. And I think a lot of people get into business and then kind of then realize how hard it is. And if you kind of do that before you start the business. Mm -hmm then you're more likely to be successful moving forward. Yeah, I agree. That whole 80-20 thing, I think if we can spend 80% of our time, you know, making sure the business is running, that we're, we're being profitable and sustainable and the business is keeping its doors open is really important. Yeah. And we can use things like our, our scorecard and measurables to make sure that's happening. But you've got to spend 20% of your time actually working on moving the business forward. That's right, exactly. Yeah, and that is, I mean, so to give you some context for that, I always sort of say that's that's one day a week. You know, one out of five days you should be spending, not a whole day because I know yeah. nobody can do that, <laughs> but it could be two hours a day, it could be yeah. two half days. That's the kind of amount of time we should be doing. Having meetings with our leadership team, making sure that we're looking at the opportunities, looking how we can improve the way we do things as opposed to just keep doing what we're doing. A hundred percent. And and that's employer's model actually is building better businesses. We're yep. there to help those businesses succeed. You're right. Beautiful. Okay. So um what what do you think you're going to be working on this year? So what are the things that you think employer is going to be sort um, of really yeah, focus yeah, on. Definitely in the first half of the year, we're focused on making sure that we're informing and educating our clients on some of the changes that are coming down the line. Mm -hmm. There are lots of changes coming down the line. Yeah. We don't know the details of necessarily all the changes so far, but what we're going to do is make sure that our clients are, um, have that information. They've got those, they've got that information ready to go mm -hmm. and they can, as we talked about before, have that plan ready to go. Um, I think in the second half of the year, it's really going to be about making sure that our clients are, are being successful, that they're, they're being able to, to, to see that success, see those plans come to fruition. Um, we work a lot in helping clients through various issues that they might have be it from an employment relations or a health and safety point of view, but we're really focused on making sure that, um, when a challenge does arise, as we talked about before, clients have that support there. They can they can work through that challenge and then they can go on and continue on with their plan or continue on with success. So um, it's going to be a bit of both. I think it's going to be a bit of a mix. We, we, again, we don't know exactly the, the changes that have come down the line. We've gone through this a couple of times already now. So we, we, we kind of know that there's often a big flurry and particularly during COVID, we were we were issuing updates to our clients almost every day right. in terms of some of the changes that were happening. And, and a lot of the time, 
the government wasn't 100% clear on exactly what that change meant or exactly how a business would implement it, mm -hmm. which is really tough if you're a small and medium-sized business trying to survive through those changes. <laughs> well, they didn't know, did they? I mean, well, none of us really exactly. knew what to expect. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, for example, vaccination requirements came out and there was certain requirements, yep. but actually what that meant in reality was open to interpretation. Yeah. And it's only now, what is it, four, three, four years later, that we were actually really starting to see, okay, the court say, oh, this is how you should have done it or yeah. should have been done this way, which is too late now for a small and yeah. small, medium-sized business to, to do that right. So we're trying to make sure we're giving our clients options. We're keeping them informed. They can make informed, educated decisions about what's going to be best for their business mm -hmm. in the new environment that's going to be work, that, that it's going to exist this year. Yep. And then really just working with our clients to help them overcome the particular challenges that they face you know, on, the, on a day-to-day -day basis. Because that's right, because you're there to support them in terms of the longer-term stuff, but you're also there when they're really, um, when, when the shit's at the fan, yes. let's be honest. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. So, we, we, you know, we're, we're both the fence at the top of the cliff yep. and the avalanche at the, the bottom, bottom as yeah. well. I mean, I like, always like to say sometimes we're the parachute on the way down. Okay, yeah. um, you know, if, <laughs> yeah. if, you're, if you're in a crisis situation and you're having to deal with various issues, you want that support there to, to have a softer landing as is possible to minimise the effects. And, you know, you could be the best business owner in the world. You could be 100% prepared and you still come into a crisis situation. Yeah. doesn't mean that you've done something wrong with the business, but it does mean that you need to make sure that you're, you know, you're um, embracing that challenge, you're working through it, you're getting that support as we talked about, um, and, and that you're trying to, you know, keep your business in the best position it possibly can be in. Now, I know that you do some amazing seminars and things, don't you? you we do. You, whenever anything changes, yes. you've always got something coming out that can go along to. So if people wanted to find out about that, I'm assuming they can find that on the website. That, that's right. Um, we, um, Employsure runs seminars for our clients, but we also run seminars for the public as well. Yes. If they want to learn more about minimum entitlements, definitely some of the changes that are coming down the track, we'll be running sessions on that for free, open to any business that wants to join. Oh, that's awesome. And other places they can find information, I'm assuming, again, your website's got, like, you've got some great newsletters, yep. you've got all kinds of... We, we do. We've got lots of guides there. available, exactly. Lots yep. of guides available. If, if you've got a particular question or you're not quite sure exactly how something works, you can go onto a website, you can access that for free. Mm -hmm. um, or you could always just give us a call as well, whether you're a client or not a client. Um, okay. We'll at least give you some advice anyway and point you in the right direction. Yeah, okay. So if you're having a bit of an issue, you can give them a call, you'll give them a bit of a, a sense of what is involved. That's and right. then they can either go, yep, we'll, we'll work with you or they'll go off and do something. Yeah, like that. exactly. Yeah. And we'll always give them something that, that, that will at least point them in the right direction that will help them find the right answer or get them to that outcome that they're trying to get to. You know, employment relations is hard in New Zealand. You know, yes. we work in a very, um, there's a lot of obligations, probably more so than any other, um, again, Western nation in, in the world. New Zealand has a, an employee-focused um, environment, and, and that's by design. It's not yep. to say it's a good thing or a bad thing. It's just the way that it is. Um, and so for, as a business owner, you've got to make sure you're, you're prepared to work through that. And, and it can manifest itself in a number of different ways. And, yep. you know, sometimes it's just, there's no way you could ever have known the answer to that. So making sure you get that support, I think, is really helpful. I think it's true. As you know, I mean, EOS that I work for is actually a global organisation and it started in the US. And so mm. sometimes when they talk about, you know, if this isn't working out, just get rid of the person. Yeah. It's like, yep, okay, yeah. maybe you can do that in America. We've got a little few right. more rules in both Australia and New Zealand, actually, because yes, Australia is exactly. fairly similar in terms of its employment law. Yeah, I, I mean, Australia is a bit more focused on, you know, what they call modern awards or or prescribing the certain ways that people have to work i would describe new zealand as more of a there's a bit of black and white on the edges and a lot of gray in the middle right. which is easier in some ways because you've got more options you've got more right ways in which you can achieve your outcome it's harder in other ways because you don't it's it's where's the boundaries you don't, where's exactly the, yeah. you don't really know what you're doing there's not a a guide there to walk you through it like it is in australia but you know built from the same foundation australia and new zealand yeah. manifesting itself in slightly different ways mm -hmm. you know these days Perfect. And so you um, are you showing your nerdiness now? You obviously love this stuff. And, and it is. It's. I think it's important. I think one of the key things that you've said is that as a business owner, we don't have to be good at everything. Right? right? There are other people out there who exactly. can actually help us. Um, and I've always said, you know, ask for help. Um, it can feel embarrassing at the time because you kind of, well, why don't I know it? But in actual fact, you like helping people. I like helping people. Sure. Um, you know, everybody loves to, get, to help other people. That's right. And so why not ask people to give you that help? And you're the nerd that loves all the <laughs> <laughs> you, yeah. you said it, not me, but you know, that loves all the people and the, and the legal stuff. I'm the nerd that loves all the business planning and yeah. how you manage people effectively in the business. So yeah, just reach out. Most of us are happy to help in, in some way, shape, oh, or form. 100%. And, and you know, whether it's, you know, we do employment relations and health and safety. There's other organizations that do tax, yep. immigration. Yeah. There's lots of different areas of the business you can run into challenges on. And, and, you know, sometimes it can feel like a lot. I've got to go to all these places for all these different types of help. 
but you kind of scale if you've got a really in-depth issue on a particular area mm -hmm. there's always going to be some group that's going to be able to help you out with that for us it's employment relations but yep. you know no matter what the issue is i guarantee there's somebody out there that can help Actually, yeah, i completely agree okay great hey look let's just go through quickly three top tips we've talked about planning support what else would you say are the, the three things people should think about when it comes to employment particularly <laughs> um, I, I think it's really focused on you know continue that engagement with your employees. I know we talked about that on yep. the last time I was here is, is having the open communication, yes. engaging with your employees, making sure that they're feeling the, you know, they can see that plan. You might have a plan, but they might not know what it is and that might add some uncertainty okay. to their I'm business. Jump in here. Um, so we used to always say that it took seven times for somebody who heard it for the first time. And so you can never yeah. overshare. But I got some recent research in from EOS Worldwide where they said that with the, the change in technology and all these different devices and things we have available, they actually think it's about 35 times now before somebody yes. actually <laughs> hears it for the first time and of course it's much smaller snippets of information we tend to absorb so that's right you know you you think you're doing a really great job communicating but i've told you this three times only another um what is it another 32 to go or something before they actually yeah. hear it for the first time yeah oh, i can i can i tested that myself I yeah. sometimes it takes me a lot of times before i really you know take in what i'm being told basically yeah, yeah. but there's a lot there's, yep. you know there's we live so in a complex much. world these days so yeah. there's a lot to take in so you can never over communicate that's I, I don't message think so. from that one. absolutely yeah. absolutely yeah. I think the other tip is, and we kind of talked about this already a little bit, but networking with with peer groups or yep. various organisations that are going to help you, making sure you've got that support structure in place. You, you've, you've got those, you know, sometimes it's a technical aspect, a legal mm -hmm. aspect. Sometimes it's just emotional support aspect. Yep. And I think having that network group can, can be really um, beneficial yep. for a lot of businesses. And, and it's something that I think Kiwis particularly are not so great at sometimes networking, you know, myself yep. included. But <laughs> yeah. but when you do it, you can you can really see the benefits really quickly. Yeah, I know I run a thing called Connected Communities here in mm. Auckland, and that's for sort of um, mid-sized businesses, yeah. mid-sized and high-growth businesses. And we don't do much so much of the actual peer support stuff that EO and FPA do, but we have a lot of get-togethers and just the discussions that go on around a table with other people who are in a similar situation. Yeah. That's where the value really comes in because it. I think it embeds – you get – you get taught some stuff or you learn some stuff from some of the experts and then by having the discussions with your peers it really helps you to understand how that applies to your business exactly yeah yeah and i think the last tip i'll probably give is, is really leveraging technology yep um we, we do it at employer particularly we've had some innovations that have really helped to make our employees lives better you know yep. give them more tools to do their job better which they love doing mm -hmm. but also helping our clients helping our customers um the outcomes that we're achieving for our for our businesses as well yeah. and i think no matter how big or small your business is there's always technology that you can use obviously different scales yep. and it does come with a bit of work of you know uh, some investments but mm -hmm. it can really be beneficial for a lot of businesses to make sure you've got you know you, you're you're using that technology to to supplemental support or to accelerate that growth it's, yep. it's never going to be a solution in and of itself you know mm -hmm. whether it's ai or anything else yep. um, but it can be a really strong supplement i think to to accelerating that growth or getting you in that phase in the yeah. first place and go with an open mind right just you know, right. think about what what don't, just one have a be a curious child i wonder yes. what is possible it, it, yeah 100 i couldn't agree with that more actually because you know sometimes you'll see one solution and you just go with that yeah and, and and you're like oh this is the only way i know about doing it so this is where i'm going to keep doing it but mm -hmm. but things are innovating and changing and improving all the time and and we've been you know we've been beneficiaries of that ourselves at employee sure but also for our clients yep. by looking at things that we never thought about before mm. and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't but the ones that do work it's like wow this is amazing it's yeah. helped us a lot yeah perfect okay great if somebody wants to get in contact with you we've already talked about obviously the employee shore website so that's yes. employee shore employee perfect yep. you just and, search and employee shore on google <laughs> and i'm assuming in australia it's dot com dot au is yes, that right is. okay good because we have some australian listeners as well yeah um and then if they want to get in contact with you lots how do they get hold of you um i'm on linkedin if yep. anyone wants to reach out to me um whether it's a client or a potential customer or somebody that wants to come and work and and, and um you know join our, our company here at, at, at employee shore yeah um but but i'm often doing a lot of seminars or webinars or you know podcasts like this or, yep. or, or other events where where i'll be around and people can can reach out to me and and, and be in touch but you know if you come to employ sure there's there's another 150 of me basically yeah supporting <laughs> our sure clients and supporting is that scary businesses. or is that, that, that's <laughs> scary great. for me because uh, you know there's lots of people there that are you know it, and it's actually exciting uh, you know it, it's to see people actually you know come with that passion that i have and yeah. you know and hopefully 
should hit me basically that's that's what i love to see yeah i, I always joke so in the us worldwide we have implementers all around the globe yeah. and we're up to 700 now wow. and it's kind of like can you imagine 700 yeah. <laughs> versions of me to me it absolutely <laughs> blows my mind it's, but but it's um it's always fun when you get together in a room with them um, because you've got 700 truly business passionate people that, that's right um, and the energy is just phenomenal so that's yeah. right and that's that common value that we share at employer sure it's about doing the right thing and making sure that we're supporting our clients to be the best that they can be yeah that's wonderful hey look thank you so much again for your time really appreciate it it's been a pleasure to talk to you as always no problem thanks for having me